Pax Imperia has become a modern classic for the Macintosh. Now the original developers Changeling have teamed up with Blizzard to produce Pax Imperia 2 for both Mac and PC. We recently talked with Changeling's Pete Sespoitis and Blizzard's Bill Roper about how this new and improved classic is shaping up for the Windows 95 platform. Pax Imperia 2 is a galactic empire simulator. More than just a space strategy game, Pax includes a wealth of detail which affects all aspects of gameplay including the construction of the gaming universe. We're currently creating up to 50 stars in a universe. Any given universe, any given star can have up to 10 planets. Any given planet can have up to 3 moons. And larger planets will actually be broken down into sub-areas. So basically, there's a lot of detail there in terms of how you develop a colony. You actually develop individual pieces of infrastructure in each area of a planet. In PAX, you colonize planets and moons to mine for minerals and research technologies. The planets have variable atmospheres, which affects what amount of the five different resources will be found. Basically, there's five different atmospheric types for planets. And based on the atmospheric type, there are five different resources. Based on which atmospheric type a planet is, it'll be richer in one of those five resources. And these are basic mineral resources that we're talking about. So in terms of resources, planets have a specialization. Beyond that, you control the specialization of the planet in saying, okay, I want it to be a mining colony, or I want it to be a commercial center or an industrial center. The five different mineral resources are all used in the same amount for the construction of ships and colony infrastructure. The idea behind this is to open up resource trading between the alien races. It's really unlikely that you're going to be able to effectively produce all the resources that you need. But one way that we have of dealing with that is, is through trade agreements. So we've got a situation where you can create ongoing, long-term trade agreements with people and say, I will send you 500 of this every turn if you send me you know, 300 of that. And that will just establish basically an ongoing trade flow between empires. Like in Master of Orion, the technology race quickly becomes an important factor in PAX. In keeping with the staggering detail of the rest of the game, expect the technology tree to be easily the biggest you've ever seen in a game. There's ship technologies, I think there's like seven groups of ship technologies. You know, weapons, drives, power plants, shields, armor, hull materials. So you've got those categories for ships. Then you've got medical technology, production technology, new structures that you can build. So you can eventually build uh, space stations and star bases and weird little jump points and whatever else you can think of <laughs> to add in there. So each of those categories then has items underneath it which are broken up into a tree. Currently I think we've got about 500 technologies, you know, distinct technologies, so that'll probably be up around 1,000 or 1,500 before we're actually as in any galactic strategy game, you can choose from a multitude of exotic alien races, each with their own specialties. PAX goes beyond the competition here by allowing players to create unique races to fit their playing styles. Then there are cultural traits that you can select and say, well, you know, great, that this particular species, through its evolution and up to the point where they developed you know, space travel, you know, this is the culture that they developed and they specialize in trading or uh, combat or whatever. So you've got those all sort of working together around this, this point system, allowing you to say, I want to create a race of warriors, or a race of scientists, or a race of explorer traders. And that's because that's the way I play. Apart from playtesting and marketing, Blizzard's role in PAX Imperia 2 is supplying the high-res graphics and designing the multiplayer game. PAX 2 will support up to 16 players, and the multiplayer games will probably play in real time. Our current favorite approach, and I think the way that we're going to ultimately end up doing it here, because it seems to fulfill all the needs, is that it's going to play in real time with, uh, set up a user-definable pause period at the end of each year. And basically, it will wait at the end of each year, you know, a minute or 30 seconds or whatever, however long you've set it to wait, or when everybody, you know, hits go, we'll just move right into the next turn. And we felt that that was a lot better than having people basically, you know, have menu, menu bar arguments trying to switch game speeds or locking people into one game speed and then basically, you know, newer players not being able to keep up or, or more experienced players being bored. In an effort to keep the gameplay as flexible as possible, Pax Imperia 2 will feature user-definable victory conditions for each player. 
Whether you're a gung-ho militarist or a peace-loving trader, you'll get an equal chance at winning. There's one just very obvious victory condition that is, I'm the only one left. I mean, that one just kind of happens, and, <laughs> and it's always there. But we're also looking at allowing users to say, this is my goal. I want by you know, year 500, I want to be at this level, or this far ahead of everybody else, or I want to reach this level of technology in this time frame, and allowing people to select two or three victory conditions they can shoot for. Pax Imperia 2 will doubtless be one of the most intricately detailed space strategy games you've ever seen, but don't be put off by that. The developers are working hard to ensure that PAX will be equally accessible to both novices and veterans. We're trying to create it so that it's operating really on two levels. On the surface level, I can point, click, and move my fleets around and, and sort of just take a broad management approach to sort of expanding an empire. And then on, on, on a deeper level, allowing people to say, no, I'm going to go in there and adjust my fleet formations and how my fleets are arranged or ships are arranged in my fleet if I want to do that and, and get a little bit extra performance out of it. If PAX in period 2 even comes close to living up to its potential, it should be a truly amazing strategy game. It takes the time-proven genre of space strategy and adds more detail and user control than you're likely to find anywhere outside of a hardcore hex-based war game, all in an attractive, user-friendly package. Shipping at the end of the year for Windows 95 and Macintosh, expect PAX Imperia 2 to redefine the PC space strategy game.